rest of the story. Dr. Harris stood in the darkened doorway of the farmer's barn, silent and staring. As his eyes adjusted, the shadows parted like curtains, revealing the shapes and the dimensions behind them. There was something curious here, something anomalous to an English village on the outskirts of London. Whatever was out of place, Harris decided, had little to do with the age of the ancient structure. For if one had stood in that very doorway nearly three centuries previous, that is to say, when the barn was new, one might still have felt uneasy, as though the observer were suddenly far from the quaint Quaker settlement of Buckinghamshire, as though one were, well, nowhere near anything at all. And then Harris looked up, up at the beams supporting the barn roof, and as he kept looking up, he realized that his head was tilting to one side, tilting more and more as though the subconscious were struggling to envision the beams upside down. And all at once it struck him. Why, the old barn midst the trees near the village of Jordans was not exactly a barn at all, not exclusively anyway. It was instead a ship, an old sailing ship whose materials had been reconfigured and reassembled to build a barn. There was no question about it, for clearly the roof beams were in the shape of a ship's keel, and on one of those beams... Well, now I'm getting ahead of the rest of the story. The discovery by Dr. Harris, at least superficially, is not at all surprising, since the best wood for construction was reserved for the Royal Navy. English farmers wishing to build their barns out of sturdy seasoned oak would often buy sailing vessels that were about to be scrapped, and that precisely is what a Buckinghamshire farmer named William Russell did to procure wood for his barn in Jordans. He was obviously correct regarding the quality of the lumber, for there the barn had stood for almost 300 years before Dr. Harris first laid eyes on it. Now, Rendell Harris was a scholar, and so from markings on the barn timbers, he sought to identify the original vessel from which the timbers had been scavenged. On a beam taken from the ship's stern, Harris found the letters H-A-R. That would be Harwich, he told himself, the name of the ship's home port, Harwich. He opened the port books, seeking a ship's name that would coincide with other letters emblazoned on the same timber, and there it was a cargo ship that had carried freight between England and France for many years before being declared in ruins and appraised and sold. And yet it was a side trip, taken three years before she was scrapped. It was that side trip that makes the vessel worth remembering. You may doubt if you wish, and others have, the research of Dr. Rendell Harris, completed in the second decade of this century, but before you dismiss it, consider this piece of evidence. A fractured crossbeam, still in the roof of the old barn, just like the one described in the ship's own log, a beam that split during a storm at sea in 1620. A telltale timber from a watertight time machine linking England's past to our future, for that barn was built from the lumber of the Mayflower. And now you know the rest of the story. <laughs>